welcome bodybuilding fans to the first ever episode of Big Bad Bodybuilding featuring Dennis the Big Bad Wolf. Uh, my name is Zach Barnard. I'll be your co-host uh, for this podcast. And Dennis, uh, Dennis came down from Las Vegas to film our first episode. Dennis, thank you for being here. We're here in North Texas, at our North Texas studios. How are you? Thank you, Zach. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, great to be here and uh, actually very, very exciting. Uh, we got a lot of stuff start, coming to up. Start a podcast together with you. Yeah. So we got um, a lot of stuff coming up. Um, obviously, I'm excited to talk nutrition, training, stories from your competition experience. Uh, what is your vision and kind of you know where you see the podcast going and and what's going to kind of set us apart or be different than maybe some of the other bodybuilding podcasts going right now? Right. So the podcast is called Big Bad Bodybuilding, um, and we're going to talk mostly about bodybuilding. We're going to bring uh, famous people on uh, on the podcast and also this is my goal uh to bring some uh amateurs and maybe uh new pros to the podcast just to um, yeah give them some promotion and also uh to see they they how they um pursuing their goals and uh you know uh, what they do in order to get there where they want to be uh, in bodybuilding, like competitive-wise and also business-wise. So this is my goal. Also, uh, I want to uh, like light out a lot of good information uh, about bodybuilding, training, nutrition, dieting, all of that. And I think uh, there's no, uh, not many podcasts they do that. So mostly it's just talk with some guests and we're gonna bring more uh, we try to bring more infos about supplements about uh, nutrition as a whole and of course bodybuilding and uh, bodybuilding stars nice yeah um so the way we're gonna kind of set this up uh we're gonna announce a topic for the show um at the end of each episode um we want to hear from you the fans we want to get your input we're going to get announce the topic and then the next episode we're going to address it answer your questions um, along the way, we'll have you know some sponsors, some sponsors, hopefully some giveaways. Um, you'll get recognized. We'll announce your your question, and then you know Dennis will answer it, um, and then we'll go off of that. So um, we'll give you the topic, you know, based on your feedback. You're going to comment below on the uh, the YouTube comment section, and then uh, we'll answer the questions and base the whole the next episode, you know, kind of around uh, around whatever the topic is going to be. Um, we de as Dennis mentioned, we plan on having a special guest depending on that topic. So if we're talking about, you know, maybe Dennis's uh, transition into training, you know, post competition, you know, we're going to have maybe some other pros or, or uh, competitors that are around, you know, in a similar situation as far as how, you know, what are they doing now to stay in shape? What are their goals? I mean, how is that going to differ, you know, between your competition days and staying healthy, things like that. So we'll bring on guests that are you know, that have expertise in that area. And, uh, and then whether it be nutrition, I mean, we have a lot of contacts and resources, so we're going to bring on the best people to not only give you some good stories and maybe some, some stuff you didn't know, uh, you know, but help you along in your bodybuilding journey. And then with you bringing in the questions, maybe, maybe learn a few things, which I know I will along the way. Um, obviously, um, we'll also address, you know, the current bodybuilding world, what's going on, uh, currently in bodybuilding people that are making, uh, you know, progress in the sport and impact on the sport. Um, and as Dennis mentioned, we definitely want to feature some up and coming bodybuilders. Um, you know, guys that, that maybe haven't quite made it yet, but, um, they're, you know, they need some exposure too. I mean, they they may not have the following that other guys have, but you know, they have a story too. And, uh, and they've gotten to where they are so far, you know, um, based on their training methods, their nutrition. So what are they using? What's the newest thing out there that, that maybe even wasn't around when you, when you were training? Um, on the note, obviously, we got, we're filming this. We're a week out from the Olympia. Um, it is going to be in Orlando this year. Um, it, it was their uh, COVID year, right? It was the last year it was there. Um, did you make it out that year? Do you remember it being in Orlando, and what was your experience there? Yes. Uh, I've been uh, to the, what, what was it, two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. 20, 2020. 2020. So it's been, I guess, it'll be yeah, years yeah, uh, yeah. I apologize. Yes, uh, it was a great experience. Uh, but look, Orlando is not Vegas, right? right. So, and uh, I think uh, Vegas is the, yeah, is is uh, the perfect spot for uh, shows like this. I mean, uh, the biggest shows, the biggest concerts are 
you know, right. played in, in, in Vegas. And uh, we have all the opportunities for that. And well, I think it's coming back next year. So Okay. On that mm -hmm. note, I mean, I don't know if we have confirmation on that, but, you know, you, you've obviously lived in Vegas for, what, 15 years now or so? Uh, almost 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Now, when you moved, was it specifically uh, for the, because the Olympia was in Vegas? Or what was it about Las Vegas that kind of drew you there? Um, yeah, basically, uh, when I signed my contract uh, with the huge uh, supplement line, American supplement line, they want me uh, to live here, mm -hmm. right, at least half a year. Um, were they based out of here, or was that yeah, just they, they, they were based started? in Florida, so it was BSN. Okay, and uh, they brought me actually to United States, but um, because I was traveling so many times uh, during a month, even uh, yeah, a couple times a week, so uh, I let my wife decide. Oh, uh, really? So yeah, yeah. So in uh, Vegas, we we always been in love uh, with Vegas because um, yeah, look, uh, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, it was. Almost everything 24-7, right? Right. So, and um, that was the place to be like it is today yeah. still. So y'all probably know? did all the touristy stuff the first week, and then you were like, okay, we're not going back there anymore. No, um, basically, it's not it's not the strip. So um, I'm never on the strip. Uh, you know, depends, of course, uh, when I visit the show or, of course, Olympia, right? But uh, the, uh, the area around the strip, right? So the whole Vegas, it's most people who don't know uh, much about... Vegas, it's, uh, you know, people live there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, we got basically everything in Vegas, uh, starting with uh, Lake Mead. So, I mean, we have a big lake. We have a, a skiing season uh, starting basically next month, you know, in Mount Charleston and uh, Lee Canyon. Uh, so, and of course, like I said before, 24-7, almost everything. But now it's getting less. So, and uh, yeah. I was traveling a lot, and uh, you know, if you have a happy wife, you have a happy life. So, and that's why I made the decision. Uh, prior to that, we planned to move uh, to Phoenix, Arizona, because uh, Dennis James uh, lives there, mm -hmm. and uh, I was uh, staying in, in, at his house for oh, two weeks uh, prior to the uh, 2008 Mr. Olympia, and that was already in our plans. But like I said. My wife uh, wanted to move to Las Vegas. That's and, interesting. Uh, she chose look, man, there. I'm, I'm really, uh, I don't care, you know. I, I didn't care at the time. Uh, I just didn't want to go to Florida because uh, it's so humid. Uh, it's 99% uh, humidity. And uh, as a big, heavy bodybuilder, I will sweat. And melt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably melt uh, right. every day from, uh, you know, from the second I get up and then uh, go to bed. So... Uh, that was a good decision, I think, uh, at the end of the day. And I uh, still love Vegas. I'm yeah. still there. Well, I think we can both agree. I mean, when I think of the Olympia, I think of Vegas. You know, I remember going my first time to t attend, well, I believe it was 98 or no, 90, 90, 99, I believe, Ronnie's second year to win it. Um, being from Texas myself, we kind of like ran and I did, you know, his, his show and would see him, you know, running around and everything. So I was a big Ronnie fan and supporter when I was a teenager. So I just remember going to Vegas, and that was my first experience back when they had it at the Mandalay Bay, um, which was great. I'll never forget it. And, you know, I've kind of been several times over the years. Uh, I did go to the year in Orlando, but um, I definitely think it belongs back in Vegas. And, I mean, Vegas is like the new mecca now, right? I mean, I think that's – there's so many new gyms have popped up. You know, you got flexes out of there. Everybody, you know, obviously Jay's impact and influence on the sport has been phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's where it belongs, and then I uh, hope to see it back there next year. I um, agree. Yes, totally. So on, on the Olympia, <laughs> let, let's get into a little bit. Um, we're not going to do our typical prediction deal, you know, and I know that you're kind of making the rounds right now, and you're going to have some other stuff coming out. So some of this may be repetitive, but I guess my question to you um, – Regarding the Olympia, who do you see, like, in, in kind of, let's say the top 10, who do you think is going to have the biggest impact as far as a, a move in the rankings based on, you know, what you kind of seen through that, maybe you'd be able to social media or the improvements they've made. Who do you think is going to kind of make that biggest move in the top? I mean, who do you see? Who do you see that being this year? Um, honestly, Samson Dawuda. Um, I, I, I talk about him um, at other podcasts um, before but that's the guy who keeps improving and uh, if you just watched uh, his last year's uh, appearance at the Olympia and this year's appearance at Arnold mm -hmm. which he won and uh, looking at the pictures and the updates right now uh, this is very impressive it's pretty unreleased is he yeah, still over uh, 300 pounds I mean uh, I you asked Milos know. 
Mills don't know. Yeah. So he's basically not stepping on the scale. Yeah. Uh, but uh, man, it's it's uh, fantastic to see someone like that. I mean, he's like six over six foot mm-hmm. and uh, weighing probably over two ninety pounds. Yeah. And uh, I think he's gonna bring something to the table. Uh, you know, which is hard not to recognize and and uh, give him uh, some some props, right? Right. So I mean. The, t- uh, the the line is the lineup is very very tough, but uh, Samson will be uh, my surprise, right? To just crack maybe the top three two, yeah. you know, and uh, move all the way up to the title, right? But hey, there are so many great great competitors which are, I mean, uh, they're they're there for years, right? So and they're all improving every year and uh, every time they, they show up on stage they bring something new uh, uh, to, to to stage right so and uh, this is very exciting based on the top two last year obviously Hadi and Derek do you see them pretty much being right there again or do you think Samson's improvements can because I wouldn't say they're the same body type but obviously coming from 212 being a similar height um, I felt like watching last year it was kind of they had I don't want to say it's like I say similar structures um, cause obviously I feel, you know, Derek is, I feel harder from the back where Hottie kind of owns him from the front, right? The quad, you know, conditioning, the, the, the arms and shoulders conditioning. I, obviously I think everybody would agree goes to Hottie, but from the back, I mean, Derek, you know, and I give him the front double bicep. It looks amazing on Derek, right? With a smaller waist, but I guess, so you, you think Dada can really, really challenge those two as far as being out there in the top. I think so. But look, uh, we have right now the top two in the world. Uh, former 212 yeah. uh, guys, you know, and uh, this is incredible. I mean, they're compact. Like, I mean, it's like Clarita, yeah, you know, yeah, you look I mean, at it because they have so much dense muscle per their, you know, exactly, per their height. Exactly, yeah. And, they, they're um, short, but they bring so much muscle on stage. And uh, the condition like uh, Hadi's, man, it's uh, like the overall package, the look from, from Hadi is just rock hard. I mean, it's like uh, granite hard muscles, uh, crazy conditioning. Um, and Derek on the other end has that uh, man uh, I don't even know how to explain that that muscle mass uh, with details and also the structure of uh, the, the, the muscle right itself so look look just look at his back his lats are hanging down I mean that's like you can grab it and it's like probably 10 pounds on, on uh, of meat you know, left and right. So things like that uh, can be uh, unseen on stage. And uh, I mean, Samson can definitely challenge both one of these guys. But from last year and now, um, if you ask people, who you, do you got for the win? It's Derek, right? yeah. Because I, I mean, think he, so. He, well, I think the massive improvements he, was so he impressive made last year between two twelve and year. What kind of improvements is he going to make? I mean, if he makes those improvements with that he did from the two twelve year to the open and makes something anywhere close to that improve, I mean, yeah, I would think he would be the favorite as well. But you know, I don't know. You know, and and uh, you know, is the waist going to be an issue like for Hottie? Could that you know play uh, you know? The determining factor whether he can win it. I think if Derek, if he doesn't bring that hardness that everybody, when you try to pick him apart, that's the that's really all you can say about him. It's just the condition from the front, right? Yes. Right. I mean, if he, fi- I don't want to say fixes because it's not bad. It's not, but I mean, it's like if he can bring that level that Hadi, then I think he can. I think he can get it. Look, it's like he he, he is really hard to drive from the back. It's almost like it's, two different bites. Yeah, but it's, it's unusual like that you know. You, you you have to be much drier and harder from the front, right? But he's not. So, and like you mentioned before, his front double bicep looks great, but smooth, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. if you look at the at the lineup, like if they compare, uh, do the comparison, like four guys, step four, whatever, he catches this, uh, your eye, right? Yeah. So the the double bicep from the front, yeah. Derek is really he's standing out, yeah. But I think that's more the silhouette. Condi- yes, the silhouette. The silhouette yeah, the silhouette right? structure. But then you right? see like the separation in the arms and everything. Exactly. Yeah, then it's, then it's, uh, that's the next thing: condition, separation, details. Ah, uh, he's lacking, right? So, but if he's, uh, he he turns around, it's all gone. Yeah. He, he's overpowering everyone it in is. that shots. You mm-hmm. know. So yeah, like I said, it's uh, it's hard for shorter guys to going to improve like uh, as I know from myself my improvements were getting bigger 
fuller and drier, right? So in the at the end of the day, if you have enough weapons, like you know, and then the, you have enough like room to bring it, bring the condition like the hardest you can possibly. So I was going for that, right? So uh, uh, losing extra two or four pounds that was not a big deal for me because I still had enough mass, right? But uh, with with shorter guys and uh, it's it's always difficult, right? So you basically can't grow that much than uh, if you if you're tall like um, Samson Dauda, right? He's what six plus something foot and weights two hundred ninety pounds. I mean. Uh, and last year was not the same, right? right. So, and that's like may, maybe it's not. Uh, I wouldn't say oh he, he made like more improvements than than the shorter guys, but it's more visible. That's that's the only thing. But uh, Hardy is hard to beat because of his full package, right? It's everything is on point, right? The condition, presentation, everything is on point, right? And Derek is right behind him. So it's gonna be very very difficult to judge, and uh, but like I said, it's it's for me, Samson is a like a dark horse. Okay, but I would I mean, say I think everybody knows it and they know yeah, he's I mean, coming. But everybody's talking about but him. Yeah, but yeah, I mean but, he could uh, potentially win it. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, but top two from last year are I think two twelve guys. Stay they're former two twelve guys, and we'll Hadi is hard to beat. He's yeah. a champion. To be the champion, you need to knock, knock him out. Yeah, and uh, I think you know. There's so many guys that have the chance, yeah. right? So I'm, I'm, you know, for me, I, I want to see what Andrew Jack brings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I saw him in Texas. You know, the show was here when he won against Hunter, and that was close. But just, uh, I mean, it's like a, a classic guy with an ash, extra 50 pounds of muscle. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, it's it's gonna be based, you know, on the judges. I mean, if he come, brings his absolute best, is that gonna be what they're looking for? Because I mean. Can't get much better than that, right? But it's a totally different look than like Derek and Hotties. But he's going to be my biggest mover. And I know he plays fairly high last year. I don't know if he was eighth or what, and I don't know how you know potentially how far he could move up. But I, I think he's going to be my my one that moves. And I and I think Crizzo, um, I mean, God, he looks crazy too. I mean, I know it's a big deal with him as presentation. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. And I don't know if he's working with anybody on that aspect. Uh, you would think so, right? But a lot of time when you get up there, and we've been there, you just like kind of blank out, right? You're just trying to, you do so much in preparation to get ready to look your best on that stage. You kind of forget about the posing, right? You can kind of go out, but he's got to stay yeah. focused on that. Cause I mean, you know, and you can pick a, a, a few things apart on him too, but um, man, he's looking good. And I mean, he's just dry yeah. in the size. Yeah. So I think he'll be, you know, he'll be up there. He has uh, also another chance to, you know, I think he'll make some him. moves, but I, I don't see he's going to do I think he's going to move this year, up. But. Of course, uh, but you know, uh, every athlete has uh, his weak points too, yeah. you know. So, and uh, with Crizo, that's the thing uh, with his glutes and hamstrings, you know, mm -hmm. anything else and, and the back, right? So, but anything yeah. else like arm size and chest, like front side, is incredible. Yeah. Uh, same with Andrew Jack. Look, uh, he looks like f uh, a flex wheeler, but a little bit wider, mm -hmm. maybe uh, not yet. Uh, so uh, developed, right in the back area, maybe like like flex, you know, in the nineties. Right, <laughs> but uh, he needs just a little bit of size because his his frame is so right. wide and Which big. is crazy to say he needs more size, but yeah, I can yeah, see. yeah. But it's I mean, you uh, take like what what Samson's been able exactly, to do it's the and same put thing. it on yeah, Andrew. Yeah, exactly. So and you I, see, I, put, I, I'm anxious to see between those two. You know, oh, I'd yeah. like to see them side by yeah. side because again, it's a different physique. But it's you know pure mass you know versus kind of more aesthetic. So I, I'll be I think they're gonna place you know right behind each other. That's what I think. But I we'll think see. so. I think so. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's gonna be a fight. So maybe maybe that um, Samson uh, development is is going like Ronnie Coleman direction. So he right. can be big yeah. as a house and still bring the condition right. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, yeah, maybe, just need maybe the little. new Ronnie versus Flex, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But it's, it's like I said, he just need to, you know, uh, bring up some mass, like get you know, a little bit heavier, fuller. Uh, but uh, anything else is just amazing. I mean, I like his physique. Yeah. Uh, so that that's the thing, you know. Bodybuilding is not just this or that. It's like so many different physiques, and then oh, I like that, I like that physique. So yeah, it's it's uh, for me. It's always hard to judge and uh, hard to pick who who looks the better or who looks the best and who looks better and why he looks better. So 
I mean, yeah. the, I, I, I can't, I could give you an explanation why. Yeah. Well, so well, there's so many things judges. to judge. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll, uh, let's touch on 212 real quick. Um, you got Clarita coming back uh, again. I, I don't I don't see him losing again. I know he's training now here at Destination Dallas, which is not far from where we're at. We're going to go over there um, this afternoon. I don't know if he'll be over there training, but I know he's based out of here now. Um, uh, he looks on point. I know he doesn't have a lot of physique updates or anything, but you know, I think everybody knows how hard what he puts into it. Uh, he's got Branch in his corner. I mean, he's, he's going to bring it. I don't see him moving. Uh, you know, I – Physiques and that, and then you got uh, Calderon coming in, you know, again, second. He'll probably stay there. I mean, he, that guy, he's just – he's rock hard, man. I mean, condition-wise, you can't get any better. He's got a little wider waist, so just for that reason, I think that's the only reason he can't he can't take down Sean, you know. Mm. But other than that, and then uh, my favorite, I like uh, uh, Krivy. Oh, I mean, as far as pure mass on a 212, I still don't know how that guy's under 212. That guy is a freak. Yeah. Um, he's one of my favorites. Uh, not the prettiest physique, but uh, I could see him moving up into that three spot this year. Um, and then you got, uh, of course, Keon bringing the aesthetics. Won the Texas Pro. Um, he, how high can he go? So you know, what are your thoughts on the two twelve? Can Keon move up and challenge Sean this year? I think Keon can definitely move up. Uh, I've seen uh, recently he was uh, at the Dragons week or two weeks ago well i think he's training out of there right now he is in vegas yeah he, he lives yeah. in vegas yeah and uh he, he he's got the best chance you know he's, yeah. he's got a, ch uh, a shot when you talk sure. about lines and aesthetics i mean who do you i mean everybody kind of says keon's the standard in that right but that's what i'm saying if he brings his best is can it still be you know sean because sean just freaking is for his uh, height sean clarita is for me uh like uh ronnie coleman yeah, just the small, just just small, right? small yeah. version. I mean, he's won uh, open shows. So. I mean, look, look, look at him. I mean, they, there's no weakness. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's incredible, right? So, and uh, for that size, height, I mean, he's bringing everything. So, yeah. he's gonna be hard to beat. So you think he's gonna very, very hard pretty, to beat? Yeah, I, don't and, uh, see him I think he's gonna stay. Yeah. Stay and there. at what point does he go into open? You know, at that no, point? No, no, no. I mean, he, he tried it, it, and uh, I mean. Yeah, Look, he had uh, that one show, and yeah, he yeah, but it's 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 not the same. Still, I mean, we had. Uh, athletes like Lee Priest, right? You know they were in the open. Yeah. You know, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't even uh, know how to explain. But I think if there's like short and short, right? So and uh, I think for uh, Sean, it's it's uh, not a good idea to move, yeah. <laughs> move yeah, up to stay in open. Lane. I mean, yes, could, I can see him going after Flex's record on yeah. that. He oh, he is in, he is a king in, 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 in two twelve, yeah. man. He, he's gonna stay there for a long time. I think so. Okay, well, let's transition in to, on that note. You know, in the classic, we'll briefly touch on that. I think it's uh, pretty recognized that, that Bumstead's gonna gonna take that. I mean, it's he would have to have a severe. And I mean, last year he won with what a torn bicep, and it didn't really. I don't even know if it was close. Um, but he's just. I think with that, it's just genetics. His. I mean, his structure. It's just so unique. I mean, I, I think he can win it as long as he wants to go. I think everybody pretty much agrees on that. But all these guys are improving. And I definitely ag agree on that, but I just, I mean, he's just, he's the face of it, man. I mean, I think he's, he's probably what the most popular bodybuilder in our sport now at this point, correct? I mean, I was in Academy, you know, a couple months ago and I see, you know, Chris Bumstead in Academy, people know who he is. I mean, right. so it's, when you can cross lines like that and get into, you know, more the cross cultures and get into where everybody frat boys know who you are. I mean, you're doing I mean, uh, right. he has like 19 million followers on Instagram only. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's. Damn so good. he's Damn yeah. Good. So he's yeah. He's 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 doing something right there. Um, who do you like? Like so, who is your guy? And I don't know if you follow it as closely, but who's kind of that guy you can see really making a move uh, in that division? I think uh, it's my opinion. Uh, Chris Bumstead is uh, untouchable, right? Uh, still, you know, after so it's just Chris and time. everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So and then uh, there's Ramon. From Brazil, uh, I think he's also very, very impressive and uh, right, right there where, where he needs to be. You know, he is uh, he's top two uh, caliber, and uh, I think anyone who wants to kind of beat th these two guys need to bring something special. Yeah. You know, they're like uh, people talking about Urs Kolechinski. Um, the bull, right? Yeah. Um, the bull is my guy, man. I'll yeah, say know, that right I now. Yeah, yeah. So and I know so he's got shredded. a different look. Yes, yeah, conditioning, man. I'm conditioning guy. 
And uh, for me, like, it doesn't get any better than that, man. And I, I, I don't know if I would say he's necessarily classic. And what is classic, right? That's a, that's and, a good question. And that's question. still a what good is question classic? because yes. to me it's kind of turned into, you know, the small waist competition. Not as much as physique, but I guess it's my question being in my competition days are behind me, but being a wider-waisted guy myself – and I kind of try to jump into the classic, you know, at the end of my career. I felt like I had a classic, but I didn't have the tiny waist. So I've never placed real high, you know, just because of that. And I could be as shredded as possible. But when you look at classic, I mean, are we talking about an era? Because, I mean, if you're talking about Arnold's era, right. Arnold didn't have a 29-inch waist. But he's classic, right? So you got a guy like Wesley Vissers. If we're, if we're, and I'm not saying that is the standard, but if you're comparing it to like Arnold and those Dave Draper, those type physiques, I mean, obviously their conditioning wasn't to the level it is now. But, I mean, they were wider-waisted guys, but they still yeah. had a great, you know, a great taper, a great physique. So, to me, when I think classic, I think more like a Wesley Vissers, you know, type guy. I'm not necessarily saying he should he should win it. I mean, I'll admit, it, Bumstead's in the next level. He, he's got that. But yeah. um, I would like to see Vissers, somebody like that, move up. I think the Bull, Mike, could really – I'd like to see him in the top five, you know, this year. But there's a lot of – that division's grown so much. I know it's pretty much the biggest division I mean, now. he won two shows uh, this year, very I impressively. So. But uh, just condition-wise, I like yeah, it, you know. Yeah, and then yeah. Breon, you know, decided to jump in there with Look, the new weight former, cap. Look, former champion. Yeah. Uh, what, two or three times? I don't know, at least at least two, yeah, two, maybe so, three. But yeah, he's, I apologize for that. So <laughs> I'm not a classic guy. I mean, we'll see if so. that if that weight cap, you know, I don't know if that was what was really, you know, keeping him from making progress. I mean, I'm yeah. sure it's going to help. Um, but is it enough to like move him back up into the top? You know, also they're they're like um, we were talking about conditioning, right? And uh, small waist and classic look. So you mentioned before what is classic, mm -hmm. right? So if you're say Arnold was classic, but you know his waist wasn't yeah. so tiny, right? Yeah. So, and also when he was posing and hitting his poses, he would twist his body, yeah. right? So just to right, and kinda, so it's, it's let's uh, say make it's, it's look how you smaller. pose. Posing is a big part of classic. Yes, exactly. Think, That's a presentation. Absolutely. That's yeah. uh, where you hide your weak points and uh, show your strong points, right? So yeah. there's Urs Kalichinsky, crazy condition, uh, but. Uh, for my, for my, uh, as my opinion, uh, for classic, he's, yeah, I mean, he needs a couple more years to bring that uh, maturity, muscle maturity. I mean, he's grainy, dry, crazy conditions, straight glutes, uh, but um, there we have, we have at it again. Like, is is he classic? All right. So in the off season, he looks more like a bodybuilder. And then when when he gets in shape, he looks more classic, right? So then uh, there's another German guy. Uh, his name is Mike uh, Sommerfield. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. To me, he looks more classic because okay. he's wider. Mm -hmm. uh, the back is more detailed. Uh, maybe the legs are not so overpowering, like uh, like like uh, from from Urs, right? So the Urs is more complete, but uh, Mike is more like. Uh, yeah, I mean, he likes maybe from the back on the hamstrings, things like things like that. But in overall, I like him better. Okay, like this is my uh, my my opinion, right? So, but nothing against Urs or any anyone else. That's just uh, an opinion, my opinion as a expert, uh, as a retired pro bodybuilder, and uh, yeah. But uh, like I said, uh, Urs is very very young. I think he's twenty four, so yeah. you know, so. Yeah. He is, uh, his body is still developing, right? right. So he's uh, improving every year. And uh, I think he's going to bring, again, a great condition uh, to the stage uh, this year. But uh, well, hey. condition's there. I mean, yeah, you've yeah, seen yeah. his updates. Yeah, yeah. He was but ready a couple weeks ago. We are talking now about condition. We're yeah. talking about like uh, the symmetry and uh, all of that, which makes classic classic, right? right. So, but. If you don't know what is classic exactly, it's it's hard. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, man. Then you have uh, Brion. Uh, we talk about him. Uh, he is more classic than uh, probably the other guys, right? So, and he brings that mass maturity and quality details, right? I so, love his look. Like even you know when he kind of started falling a little bit, I, I didn't agree with it. You know, I mean, you know, when I know. Uh, Rough Diesel kind of overtook him there and got oh, second. Yes, I mean, yeah. he looks great, but to me, I mean, Breon, I still thought was more complete. But you know, it comes down to preference, man. They were both in shape, so. But exactly. uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad, happy to see Breon back in the classic again this year. I think, I don't know if I see him as a two twelve. I mean, just 
Because you take a guy like, you know, uh, Sean Clarita or, you know, Angel, like those guys, mm. the thickness, that's not Breon, man. So no, I no, think no. I think he needs to stay in the classic yeah. or, you know, I mean, I don't know. It just depends. Everybody I mean, do what you uh, want to do, man. You're, you're, he's a legend now at this yes, point, so he can do yeah. whatever he wants. I'm just saying as far as being successful, I mean, he would have to almost change the structure of his body yeah. to, to really move up in that 212. Yeah, I mean, his age is also... Yeah, like, exactly. What, yeah. In 30, How far do you want to put Beginning you, you know, 40s you older. right now, right. I mean, yeah. he's almost in <laughs> our age. So, yeah, yeah and then uh, Terrence Ruffin. My God, I saw him uh, winning the uh, Legions uh, mm -hmm. in Reno. My God. Uh, I mean, he was, he was in shape. That guy is so short, man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. everything is just, I like it. I like it. Everything is just fits pretty well. Uh, it's all uh, good. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a good flow, you know? So, and yeah. sometimes uh, you need that good flow, right? So, just to see, you, you don't have to be actually dry, crazy dry, just to show uh, the judges what they want to see, right? And he has so, the posing, the posing, which really oh, sets posing, him apart. Oh, posing obviously. is uh, one of the best, of course. And, right. uh, me as a poser <laughs> from uh, back in the days, I, I, I don't know, I, I didn't count them. I, I got best posing awards uh, almost every year, right? So this is more important to me, just the, the presentation, the posing routine, all of that. I love it. Would classic back when, when you got into the sport, is that something that would have appealed to you? Like, could you see yourself going that route? Obviously, man, it's not open bodybuilding. It's not, you're not going to get, you know, it, I mean, the prize money, I'm sure, will start catching up. But do you think that would have been appealing to you, or you think you would have kind of stayed the route that you're? You Look, went? It's, it's hard to tell because we we, we didn't have that uh, opportunity. Right. So we will uh, invest so much time and years just to get to our goal, right? To I don't know, winning the German championships like I did, right? And then going to the uh, world championships. So you have to, I mean, you you have to build muscle, right? So and. Uh, When I won the uh, world championships, uh, that was more or less classic look. Yeah. Right? But then, the size that they are now. Yeah. yeah. So I was about 110, 112 kilos. So, and then a year later, I was 120 kilos, like 265 pounds uh, at my pro debut. So wow. there was no such a thing that oh, I, I want to stay small and just well, improve the, the condition. No. That's bodybuilding. You you grow. Yeah. You try to grow every every uh, every year, every season. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. And clearly, with your genetics, I mean, that would have been you would have had to literally stop bodybuilding, you know, and putting on muscle because you know what was your highest competition weight? Two seventy, two seventy five. Two seventy five. So I don't know highest. what your cap would have been at your height, but somewhere in two thirties, two forties, maybe. But think about how. Yeah, I mean, you would have gotten frustrated, right? Because you would have capped out at like 23 years old, more or less. So yeah, so um, I mean, it's it kind of like Chris. I mean, like Chris, he has to probably stay there. I'm sure he could beat 270 if he wanted to go that route. But um, yeah, I but could there say was that no, would be no frustrating. Opportunity. Yeah, there was no opportunity. Yeah. It was bodybuilding only. And uh, uh, look, that's this is what what I miss today. So, and I think that's why we have so many classic uh, physical athletes. Yeah, I mean, they well, are it's, straight. It's, more attainable. it's easier and faster it. uh, to to get to your pro card today and uh, stay as a professional classic physique guy, uh, um, you know, in, in in the league, right? So and start making money because that's more uh, more nice for like normal people. They see you and it's like, oh man, this guy is training and so. But if they will see us in the off season, it was like. like What the hell is this? You yeah. Know? So, yeah, that's the difference. And uh, to bring 270 to 60 on stage, you basically uh, weigh in in the off season at 300 pounds. Yeah, you know, that's so, pretty standard. Yeah, right. Uh, at, um, as far as Olympia, a lot of people may or may not know they have an amateur contest as well. You have one athlete that you're training competing yes, in that. Yes, athlete? yes, I have okay. an athlete. For Are you ma you're not making it out to, to no, Orlando? No, though, this unfortunately, year? not. A couple things changed. I uh, I was planning to. Head over to 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 see the Olympia, but a couple things changed, and uh, I'm gonna stay home. And uh, yeah, I have one guy competing at the amateur Olympia. Uh, it's next week, uh, Wednesday. Yeah. So nice. yeah, yeah, because it yeah, starts yeah. on yeah midweek, man. Forget yeah, he got that. his uh, visa. He is uh, now in in Florida. That's so been a big issue for a lot of people. Is yes, yeah, definitely. There, and so. uh, I mean, he's from Turkey. It's uh, basically almost the same as coming from Iran, but it's it's 
more more thoughtful. Good, but so yeah. how early is he coming over? Like, what, what time? When is he getting here next? Oh, uh, he no no he came uh, he came in last week. Oh, he's here. So already. yeah yeah so uh, he's he's uh, you know set up everything. So he's just uh, preparing for. Yeah. For his big day. Yeah. Well, good. On that note, I want to throw out there that Dennis is uh, is coaching um, athletes, um, and that's something that you at the time are, are you want to stay involved with. You are taking on new clients, so if people are interested in working with you, um, they can contact you right uh, directly. Yes. And, and yeah. you know, pros, amateurs, all levels uh, specific. Um, what are your kind of your requirements in order to work with somebody? I basically work with uh, everyone who is determined. To reach the, uh, his goals, and uh, of course, um, it, it's always based on the information they provide me. Uh, you know what they want to kind of start doing, or where, where where they see themselves in a year or two. You know, and then uh, of course I uh, try to do my best and s- save them some time because of my experience Absolutely. and uh, help them out. Yeah. So if you guys uh, wanna reach out to me, uh, it's Dennis Wolf. Camp uh, at gmail.com. So anytime, uh, send me an email uh, with your questions and uh, goals, and uh, I'll get back to you. Nice. Absolutely. Um, so, all right. So we're at a week out. Let's say we're filming this on a Thursday this weekend, or uh, I guess tomorrow or Saturday. Friday night's the pre judging, right? For the uh, next week. Yes, open. Okay. Yeah. So we're at one, one week out. Um, let's go, you know, for the fans, um, what. And if you can recall, you know, I'm sure everyone was a little bit different. But take us through kind of your last week prep, let's say, for the Olympia. Um, how many Olympias? I guess when you did them, they were all in Vegas, correct? Okay, yeah. so, I mean, it's similar to, you know, let's say you're still competing now. What are you doing at this time, um, you know, at the process? Like, for instance, uh, let's say, I mean, your cardio. I don't know if you were a big cardio guy or at what point of the process are you cutting that out going into the Olympia at a week out? It's always depending on the condition and uh, was there ever feeling. time you were behind where you're like I got to keep it in to the very sometimes end? yeah but it's mostly all in your head right so you 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 might not gonna see the the, uh, the 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 look right which like your trainer or your wife will see right who who, who see you every day uh, it's always uh, a little bit harder right to to recognize okay oh, you improved from last week right so but basically. If everything is going well, the last week is going to be uh, like starting six days out uh, with the depletion, carb depletion process. Uh, will uh, increase my water intake and salt intake. Yeah, and uh, two days out, I will uh, cut slowly the water and salt and start carb loading. Okay. So, but it was all before 2012 and 13. So, and... Uh, when I got older, that changed. Uh, that changed everything. So I would then uh, deplete right the whole week before the show. So and at the uh, morning of the show, that will be Friday, right? So we're talking about Olympia. So Friday morning, I will eat a good good meal, like a lot of protein, lots of fat, but not healthy fat, right? So trans fat, right? right. So and uh, some carbs, right? So. The thing was, uh, I would have around 200, 250 grams of carbs with some eggs, steak, and I would all prepare it in uh, butter. So the trans fats is going to fill you up a little bit differently than uh, the, the healthy fats. You know? So on that Friday, are you watching your sodium with that or we're putting it back in? No, 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 no. I will, I will t- look, uh, as an example, uh, I'm at uh, 12 grams, 14 grams on Monday, and I will like, uh, reduce from... Uh, when we when I compete uh, on on Friday, I will start reducing on on Wednesday. So and then Friday, I will have maybe one or two grams in the morning, and that's it. All right. So sodium is is very dangerous, but um, it always depends on on your process, right? So what do you do? You're depleting, you're carb loading, this and that, and how high was your salt intake right. during the prep, right. right? So if you took only ten grams. So that, that would be a huge mistake to go up to 20 grams, right? Right. When, when you start to fill up. So everything uh, was smooth and never like to, like, like I never cut out like completely everything. Like, you know, one day I'll, I'll be at the f- like, I don't know, 300 grams of carbs and the next day zero. 
never never uh, never happened so and uh that was in the beginning when I was, was young I would carve a lot mm -hmm. before the contest and uh, after 2012 13 I will do it completely opposite so I will deplete before the contest and only the day of the show I will eat some some carbs and uh, fat that's it interesting all right yeah. Uh, as far as the posing, like how, how often were you practicing that routine wise? I mean, we kind of know everything's, I mean, I don't know how much stock they put in the posing, you know, in the finals, but everybody knows that the projecting was where it's at. As far as your mandatories and everything, is that uh, a daily process or multiple times a day? I know some people are really big on that. Obviously you don't want to get up there and shake and start sweating. How much, you know, emphasis did you place on that the last week or even like weeks before? Was yeah, that look, uh, people? People uh, think if you start talking about posing, they think that's uh, you posing routine. No, it's the mandatory poses. Yeah, most people don't don't ah, don't don't do them right or have issues hitting them or presenting their body, um, you know, full fully how how they need to right. So basically, I would start three weeks out posing one time before every meal. Right? Before every meal. Before every meal. So Just okay. going through the mandatories. Yeah, so mandatory poses uh, before every meal. So that will be six times a day. Okay. Two weeks out, that will be two, three times, uh, you know, rotations before every meal. So, and uh, the first week is deadly, man. You you don't want to do It's like it, a though. workout, right? Yeah, yeah. so, but um, uh, the, the, the big plus from posing is that you activate different muscle fibers mm -hmm. then uh training, if, if you train right so and some people don't understand that so uh i remember i don't know if it's true or not arnold would say uh the last two weeks you will not train only pause yeah i don't believe that uh but i will actually you know uh do sessions like two three routine like uh rounds before every meal so you can you can imagine how hard it is but the thing is like the last week if your cup Carb depleting or you know a low carb, it's even harder to to do that. But why before the sh uh, before the meal? It's uh, simply because you just pause and then you refill it. It doesn't matter if you have carbs in it or not, but you refill it with nutrients, mm -hmm. and then you just kind of uh, put everything where it needs to go, and that's it. You know. So and then you also can put more meals. Uh, you know, in, in your day uh, daily routine. So uh, let's say if you if you're at five or six meals a day, and with that posing, you just get your uh, uh, metabolism going much faster. So and then probably you need to eat more often. So uh, the last two weeks, I will eat maybe seven meals, eight meals a day. So and uh, every two uh, two and a half hours. So that's that's a big change to like three four weeks out. I will eat four meals a day every three hours. Really, but four meals a day. I, like I know. I mean, six meals a day okay. every three hours. But uh, oh, the big change comes with with pausing because that's like you, different your different. More. Uh, yeah, yeah, different uh, stress for your body, and uh, yeah, that's that's my experience. And uh, the last five years in my career, I will do that every every show every season. Yes. All right, uh, final question um, on, let's go to uh, the day, uh, between shows, okay? So let's say you hit it. Was there ever a year specifically that maybe, uh, you know, you didn't look quite how you wanted to at prejudging or, you know, the key was to hold that look to the finals? What, do you remember a specific year, what you did between, every Olympia you did, was it always, it was the next night, or was there ever a morning, morning, evening pre-judging No, it was always two days. Always the next always day. two days. Okay, yeah. so what, what do you recall that worked the best, or you had success with doing in between that you made the most dramatic, uh, you know, change from, from pre-judging uh, to finals? And did it help you, or um, and how much do you really feel that it impacted your final placing? And on the flip side, what did you do? What have you previously done that was just a disaster? That you're like, I would never do that again. Um, yeah, can you tell us about you know maybe a couple of experiences you recall of that that really made an impact one way or another? Mm. When I uh, worked with trainers, uh, they will tell me, yeah, you can eat whatever you want after prejudging because your body needs it, right? Okay. So basically, it, it worked out. 
You know, but I've, I mean that works. But when you're talking 24 hours, I feel like there's that window, right? After that, it's like it can go the other direction, man. Yes. Especially with water retention. Things yeah, like but that. the thing is, you're you're so dried out. Yeah, there's no water in your okay. system. Right. And you need to be careful what you eat. So uh, one one time, I think it was 2007, my showing was incredible on stage. But then uh, I ate uh, spaghetti okay. right after that. And that had killed me the, the whole night. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't throw up. I couldn't use bathroom. So I would just stand here. Mm. So And I, I, I couldn't change it. I couldn't do anything, you know. So and that's the that was probably the worst thing I, I ever done. Like did it really affect your showing the next night? Yeah, yeah, did you no, see no, it no, from the photos? Uh, not, uh, not really. But uh, I didn't feel that I was fuller right from that meal, you know, because I was standing uh, like sitting in my stomach. So there's like no glycogen will probably go to the muscles. Right. Yeah? Well, what did so, you eat the rest of the time? I mean, obviously that was was that the night after that was like yeah, yeah, that after? was after prejudging right, right. away. So the next day, what did you just kind of back to your standard foods? Yeah, yeah, standard food. Uh, so I'll never will go full full on uh, like unnatural, like uh, whatever what I not used to. Yeah, in a diet, you know, right. So but uh, I figured it out in uh, like after 2012, 13, I would stay on my diet. Right, right after the prejudging, I will eat my chicken and rice and then go to bed. And uh, I figure out that's the best way to go. So, Just because there's system. no spikes, no nothing. Right. And uh, the condition was the same. And I remember in 2013, I wouldn't even sweat on stage during prejudging. And then I did all my diet food after, you know, chicken rice, the next day, chicken rice all the time. And that will be the same thing. I won't sweat. I won't like uh, feel like I'm 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 dying on stage. So that was the best showing and the best feeling, as far as a, a, as I can remember. Okay, good deal. Um, all right. Let's now let's briefly talk about. So we got the Olympia coming up. Our next episode is going to be post Olympia. So we want to get on here. We can we can get uh, you know your feedback on on you know where you think they should have placed, if that was the correct thing. You know, we'll get, we'll get your whole rundown on it. Um, I also want to talk about, uh, other than the Olympia, I want to talk about uh, post-show rebounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and we can talk about, you know, what you did in the past that was successful. Did you take a break from training? Uh, you know, did you really capitalize on it? Like, you know, obviously when you're putting in double the calories now, you know, did you have, you know, were your training sessions improved? Did you actually put on muscle in that post window? Or were you a guy that just liked to take a break for a little while? And obviously that depended on if you, if you had another show coming up or whatever. But I would like to talk about, you know, um, your experiences with that and what you can kind of expect to, to get the most out of that. Um, so on that note, we want people to send in their questions. Um, it could be after the Olympia, you know, send them in to Dennis, like what he thinks about, you know, a specific subject or a bodybuilder and also send us your questions on post-show rebounds. You could tell us what was your experience, you know, or, Hey, this happened to me. Does Dennis, you know, have any stories or, or thoughts on why this happened or, or what gave you the best results? And then we can kind of see what Dennis says and compare notes and maybe kind of give, you know, somebody out there some, uh, some good advice as far as what to do after their, their next show and, and then staying in shape and then getting the most gains out of the, out of that post-show rebound. Um, I mean, that's it. Uh, appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Can't wait to watch the Olympia. Um, it's going to be a good one. You know, every year they say it's probably going to be the best ever, but I mean, with the, uh, the climbs, like I say, Samson's making the improvements and Andrew jacked and, and everything it's going to be, I think it'll be the best one ever. And then let's get it back to Vegas next year. Right. Definitely, so, um, definitely. I agree with that. And uh, I'm very excited uh, to see the Olympia uh, as every year. And uh, for you guys, yeah, send in your questions. Uh, whatever you're looking forward to hear from me, get answered from me. Uh, whatever types of uh, teams you're, you know, you're looking forward, um, more stories about me, more stories about travel, uh, more stories about uh, you know, competing, uh, like doing three, four shows in a row after Olympia. Uh, that's what we did uh, every time in the past. You know, we did Olympia and then we went to Europe for, I don't know, for a tour doing another three or four shows. So, uh, yeah, send in all the questions and uh, we'll see you soon. 
With Big Zach. All right. Big Bud Wolf. This has been Big Bad Wolf. Big Bad Bodybuilding. Yes, sir. And we're out. <laughs>